Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings Podcast. Um, hope you've all had a good week and uh, a blessed and victorious Siegerblot. Um, the Siegerblot festivities uh, was three days long uh, during this past full moon this past week, which was a pink moon, I believe, as they call it every year. Um, so, you know, my tribe and I, we gathered, my wife and, of course, all of us, we gathered for, for that um, on Saturday night and had a great, great fun time, and I hope you all did too. Um, so, this week's episode has uh, been a long one coming. I've been kind of sitting on this topic for a little while now. Um, mainly just because, well, a couple of reasons. Uh, number one is I've had other other stuff that I've wanted to, to put out as well, um, or wanted to put out first. Um, and then secondly is, is I just have been dreading, (laughs) dreading this one. Um, there's, there's times when we, uh, you know, put, put, put forth a task that we just don't want to, want to see complete. Um, and this is one of them. So I suspect that, um, by the end of, of this episode, if not before the end, um, I will have some pretty vigorous feedback from certain individuals or, or certain folks out here and uh, will likely lose some subscribers, but I don't care, um, or followers or, or whatever. So if you get to the end of this episode and what I'm saying just doesn't jive with your flavor, you know, things don't line up with your view of the world, then feel free to disregard everything else that I've said or stood for over the last, what is it now? four years that I've been releasing content on this platform. Uh, you know, you can disregard all of that and hang yourself on the words that I'm saying today. Um, and I mean that in all due sincerity. Um, if you want to hang on anything, then hang on the words that I say today about this particular topic, because um, this is the end of it. This is, this is it. And, um, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna respond to comments. I'm not going to uh, engage with any anything uh, to do with this. Um, so you can send an email. You can comment about it. You can do whatever you want to do about it if you feel that way. Um, but I would just assume you silently see yourself out if this doesn't sit well with you at all. So today's episode. Um, is going to be talking a bit about the differences between this fascination with Odin, right? What people nowadays and want to want to refer to as Odinism. That and and the difference between that and and the uh, cult of Odin or a cult of Odin, and the the, the variables or the differences between these two things. So I just want to preface this by saying that you know. You can call yourself whatever you want. You can identify as whatever you want in heathenry. You know, you can call yourself a Germanic polytheist, a Norse pagan. Uh, If you want to call yourself a Viking, go ahead. Um, But we've had, we've had, we've had, we've gone rounds on this podcast and we've talked at length about how we're not really Vikings. But look, if, if you want to call yourself that, whatever, I'm not. I'm not the one that picks your socks on in the morning or, or, or picks your outfit out for the day. So you can do whatever you want and call yourself whatever you want. I mean, I've been called all kinds of things. I, I get on here and I wear tunics and I wear other things that um, kind of get me into the the presentation mode of this podcast. And I get called, you know, a cosplay 
Viking wannabe or LARPer or this or that. And, uh, you know, nobody, majority of these people don't know me. Um, none of the people who say that actually know me because if they did, um, they, they, they know how, just how wrong they are. So again, uh, what's in a name, a name is a name. And one of the names that for some reason people want to defend or stand by in, in a modern heathen day is, is, is an, they, they are Odinists. I'm an Odinist. And, um, I firmly believe that anyone that wants to adopt that name or adopt that title or use that to identify themselves as a heathen is not a heathen. There, There is nothing about Odinism. I mean, there might be some nuances, but, but ultimately Odinism is, is not heathenry. And to use that as an umbrella term for heathenry, um, I, I feel very uh, strongly against it could be that if someone's saying it out of ignorance because they think that's that's the term. Like I, I remember years ago I was called an Odinist, and I, and I quickly corrected that person. I said, no, 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 no. I am not an Odinist. I am a pagan. And I'm, I'm heathen. Uh, you know, my my path of of spirituality, my religious practices would be defined as as a as a you know, Germanic pagan or Germanic heathen, Norse heathen, whatever, but I'm definitely not an Odinist. Don't, don't misconstrue that word to, to be lumped into what I believe in. But I can see why some people, whether through ignorance um, or just maybe discovering this path or through other information, would put Odinism under the same umbrella as, as heathenry. Because if you get online and you start looking up, you know, origins of Odinism or, or what is Odinism and what is it to be an Odinist and all this time? So if you're Googling that on the internet, you're going to find a lot of things that point back to Northern European spirituality, you know? And that's a term that gets used to describe heathenry as well, right? In an indigenous uh, folk way of Northern European people. Um, so... I wanted to talk today about that and the differences between that and, and actual, um, the actual cult of Odin, so much as we know, or, or how this cult of Odin would have existed. Because to be an Odinist is not to be heathen. We're going to get into some of that here in a bit. Um, but that if you have, a, have an affinity towards Odin um, or any one of his multiple names or any of the names of his origin, so... Woldenaz, Wotan, Huden, uh, Odin. I mean, whatever name you want to attest to this figure, um, if, if that's your affinity, it, it might be worth noting some things um, to keep in mind about it. And I want to start off with that. I want to start, start off with talking about uh, the cult of Odin, you know, um, so some things to bear in mind, um, factually, right? What we know of from, uh, information that we've learned, scholarly work, historical evidence, academic work, you know, uh, whether it's archeological, whatever. We know enough that Odin as, as Odin, Right was a deity, a figure that was definitely, you know, venerated and worshipped in, uh, in, in Scandinavia, in Northern Europe, but that, that came through later on in Scandinavian history. Um, and we also know that, for the most part, that, that Odin was a god that was not venerated by everyone uh, or, or by the, the, the major population. Odin tends to be um, seen as, as a god associated with the elite, the, either the warrior elite, the political elite, the aristocracy, the nobility, royalty. Um, he was not a god of the people, um, for, the, for, the, for the majority speaking. And again, we don't even see his his um, his presence as Odin being 
inserted into Scandinavia until, you know, after the like sixth century or so, um, uh, CE or BCE. Um, I believe that's that's accurate. But so some things that we know of for 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 a fact, right? That around the 13th century, you know, so that's going to be like what the the 1200s. Odin was transformed from the 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 war god, the the god of death, the god of poetry, the, all of these these things that that have his origins from continental mainland Europe where he came from, where, where this idea came from, because again, it's, it's important to realize that the Northern Scandinavian countries didn't, didn't find out about this Odin figure until the Germanic tribes moved North and started to invade and all this. So around the 13th century, Odin changed and transformed a bit in, in terms of his, his, his figure by the ever growing and strong, uh, Christianity movements that were that were happening at the time, you know. So, a lot of his uh, a lot of his attributes became godlike in the sense of the the, the Abrahamic God, you know, or or, or Christ like, if you will. Um, we see a lot of similarities or parallels between the Christian myth um, and, and and Christian lore that again has parallels to the Germanic or Norse. And Scandinavian lore, you know, Jesus, God, who hangs on a cross, sacrifices himself to himself, literally God in the form of Jesus being sacrificed as the ultimate sacrifice, Odin hanging himself, again, different hanging, but still a hanged God um, motif um, definitely is evident. Now we know that the that that hanging sacrifices, hanging uh, sacrifices were um, a thing. And that's that's definitely evident in uh, such attestations as, as Adam of Bremen, who is I believe the, 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 the person that documents the human sacrifices that were done every nine years in, in Uppsala or old Uppsala, Sweden. Um, so that's one thing we know of. We also know that Odin, uh, wasn't always a central figure in, in Scandinavia and that it, uh, was not, you know, Odin was not an indigenous God to the far North. He was, he was brought up again from the South, um, and from the lower continental mainland Germanic countries that, uh, came through by way of, I believe, like Denmark, you know, so as, as we, we start seeing things move further up um, is, is, is when we start seeing Odin becoming relevant up there. Um, for the most part, you know, the, the, the Swedes held on to Freyr as their major uh, deity, right? So Odin wasn't even a main figure um, until, until later on. Probably during, like I said, the late fifth to early sixth uh, centuries, um, when we 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 start seeing, or, or or when we when we have like historical evidence, archaeological evidence of there being a a god who may have possibly later become this Odin figure, you know, the Wodenas uh, name. But it was really only during like that the the Viking Age um, that that Odin became a central figure of of religious focus. Again, it was because of the introduction of him by the Germanic tribes during their invasion. So the cult of Odin, as it were, this, this cult of, of specific followers that, that, that adhered to or, or, or wanted to adhere to a, a worship of, of Odin almost exclusively was happening around, again, the sixth century. Um, and it, as I mentioned before, it was it was isolated or, or or kept pretty restricted to the aristocracy, those the, the the political and warrior elites. So kings, 
nobility chieftains perhaps you know these these were the types of, of figures that that had a a focus on odin and that's a lot of you know again it's it's pretty condensed i'm not i don't need to go into a lot of great detail you guys can um do your own research on this cult of odin because there were there were a lot of different cults of gods you know what i mean there was evidence of cults of thor cults of freyr maybe Frey or Freyg, Freya, I mean, so there's that, there's that debate of um, are Freya and Freyg the same? Uh, were they ever separate? How, you know, were they the same thing and just became separate later on, that sort of thing? Um, but we have, uh, you know, you can do your own research on that. It's, it would be a very long, long podcast to, to go into those specific things. But we know that there are, or were, I should say, a, a specific focus by certain people at a certain time to venerate Odin. That is not the same as Odinism in the modern day or in the modern context. So as we focused on fact for the cult of Odin, let's look at some facts regarding Odinism. So when did it originate? It is not a old thing. It, it, it doesn't predate the early, I think it, it doesn't predate like the mid 20th century, early 20th century, maybe at the latest. Um, but it originated by a guy who was an Australian lawyer and a particular, he had a particular fascination with, with fascism. All right. His name was Alexander Rudd Mills. And Mills uh, had little to no scholarly background. You know, he was again fascinated with with fascism and 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 trying to, as he would later write about bringing, you know, the an indigenous uh, religion back to the British peoples, um, so on and so forth. So um, he was he was kind of just he was a whack job. I mean. It, he, he had no scholarly work, you know, uh, background at that time to know what it was that he was actually doing to try and reconstruct or, or, or bring back old ways heathenry or old ways paganism, you know, whether you call it indigenous heathenry or indigenous beliefs of, of people of, of Northern Europe. He just had a fascination with, uh, with fascism, and, and this, was, this is where he found it that to work for him. His... His version of, of Odinism, so Mills's Odinist uh, liturgy, actually is 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 heavily based on an on an Anglican Christian order of worship. He had published a couple of books by the mid nineteen fifties. I would say I think it was like nineteen fifty seven. He had he had a couple of books published by then or around then, um, and uh, you know so you can you can research that and, and find out his again Alexander Rudd Mills or A Rudd Mills and and just search what what books he wrote um and it's riddled with with again the anglican christian orders of things you know when to do certain things uh you know uh just certain rites by at certain times of the day and blah 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 blah, blah. so that's where odinism originated was with with this australian fascist who so happened to be a lawyer um, so fast forward a few decades, maybe, and, and enter the Odinic Rite, which is one of the organizations that is still to this day recognized as a, um, a white supremacist organization. And they define Odinism as the natural religion of the people of, of Northern Europe. Which is again not true. Um, I go back to the fact that you know again you call it whatever you want, but if you're calling it something wrong, then you got to stop it. <laughs> you know, if you are a heathen and, and none of the values of Odinism or the Odinic Rite or anything that it's associated, then simply don't call yourself that. You know, if I don't want to be associated with something because of of the negative connotations that that name has, then I'm not going to call myself that. 
you know, oh, well, it's misunderstood. No, it's not really misunderstood. I think you're just delusional and that you're, you're, you're unwilling to face the music and, and, and face the facts of what, of what the facts truly are, you know? Again, that being that the Odinic Rite, Odinism, are all very, very modern uh, movements and, 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 and all very modern takes on something, and it's, and it's, a, mis it's a skewed take on actual heathenry, on actual Germanic paganism. I don't, know if you're not, I don't know if a lot of you know, but also um, the infamous Nine Noble Virtues, which everybody seems to, you know, get all up in arms about, and I've done short-form content about, and I've had a lot of backlash on that. It was informational. I was sharing information and trying to educate and whatnot, but the, Od the Odinic Rite is the organization that codified the nine noble virtues, which is, which is why I do not have any of that a part of my, you know, my repertoire of heathenry. I don't, I don't need that to be a good pagan. I don't need those charges or those codes of, of conduct. They're not even really codes. They're just buzzwords. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't need that. We don't need that um, in heathenry. And the nine noble virtues as, as a thing um, just really ought to be they ought to be not ever talked about and forgotten because of their affiliation and association with the uh, the Odinic Rite. They codified it. They're the they're the reason why they're so popular today. And um, you know, let's 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 get away from that stuff. We don't need code words. We don't need buzzwords to live the ways that that mean something to to us and to our. Our, uh, our descendants and, and the people near and dear to us. The Odinic Rite has also um, founded um, by known supremacists, known white supremacists and fascists, and as I mentioned, is still today recognized um, as a white supremacist organization. So when you've got all of that against you, when you've got all of those odds stacked against you, why in Helheim do, would you want to have any sort of association with it? Why would you want to defend yourself as an Odinist? You know, knowing that it has all of literally everything bad about it, uh, it associated with it. And again, I say, you know, call yourself whatever you want, but I mean, shit, if, 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 if you are truly not, and, and you know, if you are truly not a supremacist, if you are truly not a fascist, if you truly do not feel that um, things about folkish heathenry are are, are 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 wrong, or if you you know if you truly feel that things about folkish heathenry are are just inherently wrong, uh, then don't call yourself an Odinist. You, you can call yourself a heathen, you know, but if you want to insist that Odinist is the right term for it, then you're not part of what I believe in. You're, we're, 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 we're as far apart as the East is from the West. We, we, our, our values do not align. We may, on the surface to some, because of certain symbols that we wear, look to be the same thing, and that's the big problem. When, when symbols get appropriated by the wrong group, everybody suffers for it. Everybody gets, you know, um, a, a, a bad rap because of it, you know. And uh, I've gone through, I've gone through, I, I know we all have uh, gone through times or, 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 or phases maybe where we're trying to find ourselves, we're trying to find what it is that we want to identify as, be called, you know, associate with, et cetera, and, and that's the thing that we land on at the time, you know. Um, I, I can remember at one point, especially my early baby heathen days, you know, coming in and thinking, you know, I will see you again in Valhalla and all this other kind of stuff that... I look back at my, you know, baby heathen Jesse, no, that's bunk, you know, that's, that's ridiculous, that's silly, and no, <laughs> you don't think that way. So, you know, again, if, if, if what you want to call yourself or identify as is, is an Odinist, then, then, then you have nothing, I have no part with you, we are not similar, we are not alike, uh, inherently, you know, again, on the surface and on the exterior, there may seem like there are things that we 
share in common, but I absolutely do not hold to um, or, or, or place any good worth on, on the values that Odinism has as a, as, a, as a whole. Go through and read some of the things contained in, uh, on the website for joining the Odinic Rite. You can't join the Odinic Rite if you are not Native European. Okay, so if basically, if you if you can't, they want you to send a picture in. Um, this is very similar to how the AFA has has run things for their entire existence since the you know early seventies, um, and uh, it's 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 a, an affront to the gods. It's an affront to our ancestors. It's, it's an affront to our people, to just people in general that that we're over here. calling something by a name that is associated, you know, calling something of, 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 a, of a sacredness, right? Calling our religion something that is definitely not, not sacred, that, that, that is riddled with hate and bigotry. And they can make all the excuses they want. It's, you know, it's not hate. It's, 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 it's not about, it's about, it's about preserving folkways. And it's like, yeah, but you're, what folkways? There is nothing like that that exists in, in really any, any, Northern European countries anymore. I mean, it's so riddled with with other influences and, and things from from Proto Indo European cultures to um, Middle Eastern to to just all of the sorts of things. Right? What is what is truly indigenous now anymore? And and what is being appropriated as such, or what is being adopted as such? I I just I don't I don't see how someone who is truly not an, hateful and not and not bigoted and not would want to have the name Odinist on them. I wouldn't. And I don't see why people who are not that way would. You know, I've had comments on on other videos that I've done on other podcasts that I've that I've released about stuff like this. And people are literally just like all of this other content that I don't get interaction on, you know, it's crickets. And then I post one, you know, 60 second long thing about, hey, watch out for Odinists because, and then here they come out the woodwork. Well, I'm, I'm an Odinist and I'm nothing like that. And, then, you know, my husband's an Odinist and, hey, I didn't, I didn't ever feel that way. Well, then if you don't feel that way, then stop calling yourself that. Ditch the name. Forget it. Bury it. Bog it. Burn it. Something. Get rid of it. Just stop. Stop identifying as that. Stop. Stop appropriating that as as a as a way of life because it's putting honest people that people that are in this uh, life and, and and that that live this way, you know, honestly, truthfully, sincerely in a bad light, and it's and it makes it very difficult. And it, you know, it goes back to a lot of folks out here doing so much good, you know, with the name of heathenry behind them. Or in the name of heathen, I'm saying not that they're using that as a as a as a as a torch to carry per se, but you know there there's a lot of good being done, um, and it's it's unfortunate that that people are seeing that as a you know what it it doesn't matter right or wrong it doesn't matter don't be using these symbols this is how you know problems arise this is how you know how could a problem arise if you're doing something out, you know rightly and goodly how could a problem arise if you're if you're doing it for the right reasons, if it's being done for the wrong reasons, and of course it's going to come across, or, or it's going to be seen as being dis, you know, uh, dishonest and disingenuine, and and or, or ingenuine, disingenuine. It's opposite of genuine. Um, you know, it's going to be noted and it's going to be seen as such. There's, there shouldn't be any question in people's minds and it shouldn't be something that we have to stop you know don't 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 use the banner of the raven don't don't use the hammer don't don't use any of the runes don't do anything with them in the name of of you know uh activism okay i mean i guess we're just and i'm not and i'm not that person you know what I'm saying i'm not the one that's out here doing it and i don't um ever plan on being because I'm, I'm much more, much more hearth centric. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I focus on what's, what's happening within my inner circles, my inner yard and, and my tribe, the, the immediate extensions of, of that inner yard. 
I don't worry about the big picture stuff. I'm not in that game. I don't I don't have any interest in in doing that. I barely had any interest in wanting to do this. Because again, it's just a it's such a ridiculously stupid topic to have to keep covering and keep hashing over. And I'm and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of a lot of things. <laughs> the older I get, the less tolerant I get. Um, and the more I just wanna the more I just want to, you know, isolate, just get away and, and just focus on the things that I know make me and my people happy, like my family, my inner yard, my inner tribe. You know, I have a very tough time and, and this might surprise people. Um, people that have been following me on this journey of mine that have been subscribing to my content that have been supporting me over these years. Um, I, I don't, I don't really like putting myself out of the way for, for people. I don't know. Um, I am aware once you've proven your worth to me, then I will, and your family to me, you know, then, then that's when I will, go out of my way and I will be there for you. And I mean, I, uh, you know, just case in point, I was literally starting to record the beginning of this podcast and I get a call not five minutes in from my father-in-law and, Hey, you busy? I'm like, yeah, kind of doing a podcast. What's up? Oh, nothing. I'm just, you need some help with something. I said, Hey, I'll be there in a minute. I'll, I'll be, I'll be right there. Stopped what I was doing here on this podcast and went and, and, and helped my family. That's what it's about. That's what I'm about, you know? And if what I needed to do for my family, you know, um, prevented me from releasing an episode of a podcast this week, then there wouldn't have been a podcast this week. That's just, it's just as simple as that. None of this, and I, you know, I don't mean to sound unappreciative, but I mean, I do, because I, I appreciate the audience that this gets to, however small or big or whatever. Um, but none of this really matters. <laughs> you know, if I stop doing this stuff tomorrow, people will be upset, maybe. People will be, people will miss it. Um, and then they'll forget. They'll forget. They'll move on to the next biggest thing or, or the next podcaster or they'll find something else to occupy their time with and uh that's fine and i'm fine with that I, I like i said i mean i i do what i do here because it gives me an opportunity to externalize thoughts and and, and talk about things that are on my mind and, and share ideas and, and maybe it sparks conversation but um i don't know the more and more i go on with 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 my journey it's there's 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 so much out here in this in this great big world that i really don't like and to talk about it and to and to bring it up and to make awareness it's i have to force myself to do it and as i was mentioning earlier in the beginning of the podcast you know it's it's tough to force ourselves to get into the doing of things that that we don't want to do but that are needing to be done you know, um, I don't know how the conversation went off from, from Odinism to this, but here we are. <laughs> it's namesake of the podcast, right? Random, random ramblings, random heathen ramblings. So that's all. I don't know. You know, you guys can call yourselves whatever the, whatever you want to call yourselves. You can call yourselves the flying spaghetti monster the Valkyries of Odin, for all I care. And you can make a church organization. You can be, you know, you can be your own goatee. You can self-ordain. You can do all that crap that, what does it mean at the end of the day? Nothing. You know, people will say here, oh, here you go. The, the self-ordained or the self-proclaimed chieftain of clarity folk. Yeah, I got news for you. I'm not self-proclaimed anything. That title was given to me 
by my tribe. My tribe trusts me for that, and that's what matters to me is my tribe. I ain't got to prove nothing to anybody else except for them and my family. And, and my worth is continuously, um, I, I'm continuously proving my worth because that's how it's done. You know, you don't just prove your worth one day and then that's it. No more proving, no more worthing. You're done. You did everything you needed to do. No, it's a constant work in progress. It's, it's always, you know, you are always proving your worth to your people. If you uh, are genuine about it, you know, never sit back, never relax. And, and you know, this is, this is one of those things that, um, you know, a lot, some people could argue and say that, well, you know, you, uh, you're proving your worth now because you, you said you didn't want to do it, but now you're doing it. That's a, that means a lot. I mean, Whatever. Uh, I'm not here to put words in people's mouths, and I'm not here to put thoughts in people's brains that aren't aren't uh, ready to be there. But um, it is what it is, and uh, we do what we do. So if you made it this far at the end of the podcast, I have no really reason to, to ramble on further, then uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to me uh, ramble on about this. And if you want to support the podcast, uh, please click the link tree link down in the description and in the show notes. Um, so that way you know all the ways that you can support. Um, Linktree Link has all of the ways, the, the, the social media, the, the, the Patreon, the Linktree, or sorry, the uh, Spring Spring Store with all the merchandise. It's all there. Click on it. Check it out. Or don't. It's fine. So I always end the podcast on a note that's... Um, you know, may the gods continue to notice you. May your ancestors smile upon you. Yes. Except the bigoted racists, the the Odinic right and all of them. I hope I hope the gods never notice you. And I hope that your ancestors have forgotten you. So till we talk again. If you're still here next week or next time or whenever I do this thing again, if you're here, I'm here. Thanks all so much for watching. See you in the next one.